Why is perspective such a problem for so many of us for so long? In this video, I want to look at what is the problem? That's pretty quick and you'll be pleased to know that it's not you. Then what's the reason for the problem? With all the teaching material on perspective available, why does it continue to be such a problem? And thirdly, what's the solution to this problem? And that makes a lot of sense when you understand what the problem is and why it exists. Get ready for the light bulb to be turned on when it comes to perspective. So what's the problem? So I'm all set to learn how to draw buildings and I know perspective is important so I'm watching some perspective videos. I'll start with one point perspective because obviously you start at one and here's a nice very mathematical looking cube being drawn. Well that looks very professional, very architectural. That's great. That's one point perspective. That's not too hard. I can see that. Hang on. There's another one point perspective. Ah, this. Ah, I see. This reminds me of westerns I watched when I was a kid where the sun sets in the center of the main street. Very good. That's not too hard. Now I'll do two point perspective. That obviously comes next. This looks more like buildings. That's great. And now three point perspective. Let me see. This looks like what you'd need if you draw a skyscraper. Well, maybe I'll draw a skyscraper one day. Three point perspective. That's great. We've just graduated from Perspective University. We learned all our lessons on one point perspective, more one point perspective, two point perspective, even three point perspective in case we want to draw skyscrapers and we're all set to go and draw. But when we look at real life, this doesn't seem to have prepared us very well. Not even this. We can see some vague similarities. But how do you apply them to this? There's no line. There's no dots with VP on it. How do you know where to put the vanishing points? That was always the starting point. So where do you start if there's no starting point? Let alone if we have a view like this to draw. If all of this is required for a box, Imagine how many lines and dots and connections or whatever are needed for this. Perspective is way over my head. So that's the problem. And if this is a problem for you, then listen carefully while I explain why the problem exists, the reason for the problem. It's not really the fault of this diagram. It's doing its best. So we have a problem. We've watched all the perspective teaching videos and we feel that we understand them when we watch them. But when we look at a real life scene, they don't seem to connect at all. What's the reason for this problem? In my understanding and experience, I think there are three reasons for this. The first is that for most of us, if we draw from life or from reference photos, then perspective theory has a very different role for us than if we're creating structures from our imagination, such as if we were an architect. If we draw from life or from references, it's much more helpful to understand perspective theory as telling us what to expect to see in some measure rather than telling us what we have to draw. It's not perspective theory we need to understand better, but it's probably our observation skills so that we can see more accurately what's in front of us so that we can then put that into our drawing. And if we understand perspective theory rightly, it will help us anticipate the sort of patterns we should see in the lines of our drawing therefore help us to see them more accurately and if we see things more accurately, if we observe them more accurately, then we have a far better chance of drawing them accurately. So rather than having this misunderstanding where we think of perspective as equaling one or two or three or multi-point perspective diagrams, we should think of perspective in a much bigger picture understanding that perspective is simply the way something looks from a particular viewing point, from a particular location. And if I change my location while I'm looking at a building, then the way that building looks to me will change. The building hasn't changed, but as I change my location, the way it appears changes. What I see in front of me always comes first if I'm drawing from life or from a reference. But I find those perspective theory diagrams a tremendous help in anticipating and understanding what I'm seeing and therefore in being able to draw it accurately. Big misunderstanding is in thinking that somehow these diagrams are telling me what I need to draw. So I put the importance of these small teaching diagrams ahead of what I'm actually seeing. And that's certainly the cart before the horse. This second part 
of the reasons why perspective is such a problem is something that we're actually not told in these perspective teaching videos or at least certainly not usually told and that's that they have a very limited application what's in these diagrams only works the way it's shown in the diagrams as long as all of the ground is perfectly flat and as long as all the structures line up in straight lines to each other and at right angles and as long as the structures are all square or rectangular prisms. These diagrams are 100% true for those circumstances but there aren't that many real life streetscapes that look like that which means we're remembering our perspective diagram videos but looking at streetscapes or at photos and trying to see things that aren't there the way they've been shown on the videos. When the ground level goes uphill, we need additional information. When the ground level goes downhill, we need additional information. And when the ground level goes up and down, up and down, we certainly need additional information. When the streets do not align at right angles to each other, we need additional information. When the streets curve around towards us, we need additional information. When the streets curve away from us, we need additional information. And when the buildings don't sit at right angles to each other, we need additional information. There isn't time to go into these situations now, but I do have teaching videos on my perspective playlist that do look at all these circumstances. And the third of the reasons why perspective can be so difficult to understand is that the one important part of these perspective diagrams that does apply everywhere is so neglected. We're talking about eye level. Yep, the one really important thing in this diagram is eye level because it's the one thing that stays the same in the entire scene that we're looking at, whether it's in life or in a photo, whether it's one point perspective, whether it's a street in one point perspective, whether it's three point perspective, whether it's two point perspective eye level remains the same and yet the focus always seems to be on the vanishing points which often we can't even see on our paper in our reference or even possibly in real life we couldn't see them if we tried to and depending on the ground and the alignment of the buildings there can be many vanishing points and yet there will only ever be one eye level in any one scene to be even more unhelpful it's still often called the horizon and yet the horizon is something that's got nothing to do with perspective. The horizon is the line where the land meets the sky, where the sea meets the sky. And it's probably not going to be at the same place as the eye level. And if it is, it's only a coincidence. And eye level tells me one incredibly important thing that I need to know when I draw. It's one of the most important things I need to know for my line work. And yet I don't know that I have ever heard this point talked about in a perspective diagram. Not just is it not talked about, but we're not even given the information we need to see to realize its importance ourselves. And that's this. In a scene such as this, where we're looking from a side angle onto a wall, that if we look straight at this wall, all of these lines would be horizontal. But because of the angle, they mostly slope. But at eye level, we actually have a horizontal line across all the horizontal lines in our scene. So I can see an angled line there, and I can see an angled line there. And if I look carefully at the lines in this stonework, I can see in fact that the stonework line here and here form a horizontal line. And in fact, I can also see that where there are horizontal lines further down this street, they also join up in a horizontal line on this line. In other words, the eye line gives me a horizontal line going right across whatever lines may be in that particular scene. And it's true for every part of this scene. No matter whether the streets are going up or down, this is a downward sloping street, or even if they're curving around. If we look at our curving village street, again, it's a bit easier because we have these stonework lines and we're looking for the straight lines. Now, if we look at this building here, we can see that they're actually sloping down this way and they're sloping down this way. So we don't really have, it looks like the straight line would be the first line of stonework that we don't have. So if we get our eye level line and we put it here, we can see that in fact, 
on this building here, even though it's not aligned with this building, it actually gives me a horizontal line on its stonework. That the stonework above this line goes down and the stonework below this line goes up. So this is where the horizontal line is across the whole scene. Unfortunately, the line work on this building is mostly obscured. But if we look at this window here, we can see in fact that we do get the horizontal line there. These heads do not line up on eye level because they're on a higher level than I am. It's my eye level, not their eye level, that counts. Once I see that the horizontal line is here, then I know that above this line, as horizontal lines get higher and higher, they will increase in angle. And it happens on all the buildings. As the lines get higher and higher above eye level, they increase in angle. The more the building slopes away from us, the higher in angle they will get. And with horizontal lines below eye level, they also increase in angle, but the other way, as they get further away from eye level, going downwards. In this scene, there's obviously no line work here, but there is here, and we can see the angle start to increase. And we can see here, we can see that the, li the line work starts to slope slightly up the other way. So once I work out eye level, it tells me the place where the sloping of the perspective angles change direction. And that's so important. Probably the most common perspective mistake I see in looking at drawings is where different buildings in effect have different eye levels because there hasn't been this consistency of eye level understood and applied. I have a couple of videos on the importance of eye level which I think are amongst my most significant. Knowing to look for eye level as the first thing to do when we come across a scene to draw is vital because it gives me a head start on knowing where the lines angle upwards or angle downwards in every single part of this scene. First off, we need two quick diagrams. And here we have them. Our perspective diagrams would be more useful if they highlighted the fact that any horizontal lines, whether they're solid lines or simply a line where architectural elements such as windows line up, that happen to be on eye level will form a horizontal line, such as the tops of these windows in this two-point perspective diagram. The top of the door is higher, so it adopts a perspective angle going towards the vanishing points. The bottom of the windows are lower, so they create a perspective line going to the vanishing point. But it just happens to be that the tops of the window are at eye level, and so they form a straight line. And that tells us the point above which the angles have to increasingly grow, or below which they have to increasingly get larger the other direction. But it could be, as in this case, that the first of two horizontal struts in the windows happen to sit on eye level. And because they're all at the same level across all the windows, they form a straight line that we can see here. Because they happen to coincide with where eye level is, so they give us a straight line. And that's a shortcut way of our knowing that above that, the perspective angles will increase, and below that, they will increase, but in the other direction. I'm Stephen Travers. If you're finding this video helpful, why not subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and hit notifications so that when a new video is posted, you'll know. And if perspective really is an ongoing issue for you, I have over 30 videos on perspective on a playlist on my channel. So why not check out those titles and see if any of them particularly speak to some of the issues you may have with perspective. Let's get back to it. So what's the solution? It's far more in the way we think rather than the way we draw. I mustn't see perspective theory diagrams as something I somehow need to force into my drawing or as some sort of template I have to make my buildings fit into when I draw them. They help us to understand how buildings may look when viewed from a certain angle under certain landscape circumstances. And I need to realize that the most important thing is careful observation. I mustn't draw what I think I see rather than what's there. Or I mustn't draw what I think should be there because I'm trying to fit it into a perspective framework 
instead of concentrating on observing carefully and accurately what's actually in front of me. In fact, if I can carefully observe what's there and draw it accurately, I don't need to know any perspective theory at all. But the perspective theory is helpful because it alerts me to the sorts of things I might see and therefore gives me a head start in identifying them and understanding what's happening, seeing some of the larger patterns that may be happening with the buildings in that scene because I've got a framework which in some cases may be helpful. And the more easily I can see the detail, the more accurately I can draw them. And if we want to think about perspective theory, then possibly the most helpful part of it is the usually ignored eye level part. The eye level will be consistent regardless of how the land is, how the streets slope, or how the buildings are oriented to each other. And any horizontal detail which happens to be on eye level will form a straight line or parts of a straight line right across our scene. And it will easily give me the point where all the lines on all the buildings, regardless of where they are or how they're sited, where those horizontal lines will slope upwards if they're above eye level or downwards if they're below eye level. As I said before, the theory is more important if I'm creating buildings and landscapes from my imagination, if I'm an architect or a draftsperson, and particularly if I'm drawing whole landscapes for animation and other purposes. But for most of us, but for most of us drawing from life or copying from photo references, we let perspective overwhelm us by thinking it's our master instead of just one of many tools and not nearly as important a tool as the two we have in our head. So it's time to draw buildings without fear or frustration. And if you want to hang around for just a minute longer, you can watch me very quickly draw a streetscape where I put all these things into practice. See if you can spot where eye level is. See you next time. Have fun. In less than two minutes, here's a quick freehand pen drawing of an Edinburgh streetscape. Now, seeing this row of buildings and of windows, can you work out where eye level is? We're looking at the place where the horizontal lines, where their perspective angle shifts from sloping downwards to sloping the other direction. And of course, eye level can be at any part of our scene because it depends where the viewer is standing looking at the scene. If the viewer is standing low down when they took the photo or did the sketch, then eye level will be low down. If they were up high, maybe they were in a building across the road, then eye level could actually be very high in the building or even could be higher than the building, which is what you get when you're looking down on a subject or another building because you're in a higher location. So there's no automatic place that eye level has to be. But once we see that spot and there's the horizontal line that runs along the detail of our scene, it makes it easier to get accuracy with our perspective angles as we slowly increase them one direction or the other direction. It really does provide a really helpful framework for observing then the perspective angles that we need to draw. Now I just cross the road down the other end of the street and come back on the right hand side.